Let's go through a few updates on RoboDebt. The first thing is that the sealed section of the RoboDebt Royal Commission report could soon be published. When the Commissioner published her report, one chapter wasn't included and was sealed from the public. This chapter contained the names of people referred for either civil action or criminal prosecution. The report was sealed so it wouldn't prejudice any of the potential civil or criminal actions that may arise. But despite all the wrongdoing uncovered by the Royal Commission, there's been very little consequences. And given that most of the civil and criminal avenues have been a dead end, the Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, is considering the release of the sealed section. This isn't the first time it's come up, but this seems to be the most promising. If it does get released, I'll do a detailed video on the sealed chapter. But for now, let's talk about the drama at the National Anti-Corruption Commission, or NAC. In a previous video, I ran through how the RoboDebt Royal Commission had specifically waited until the NAC was operational before making referrals to it about a number of people. Almost a year later, in June 2024, the NAC published a media release saying they weren't going to investigate the referrals because it would add no value in the public interest. The NAC's media release was a shock especially given that the Royal Commissioner had thought it was important to make the referral in the first place. This wasn't some anonymous tip-off from a payphone. The decision generated a bunch of complaints to the Inspector of the NAC. The Inspector is an independent person who oversees the NAC's activities and has the power to launch investigations into the NAC to make sure there's been no corruption, maladministration or misconduct. And that's exactly what happened. In June 2024, the inspector announced an inquiry into the NAC's decision not to investigate RoboDebt. All of this seems like bureaucracy gone mad, but the model is sound. It's very similar to the New South Wales ICAC, which also has an inspector. Anyway, at the end of October 2024, we finally got to see the inspector's report, and it raised serious issues. The NAC is led by the NAC Commissioner, Paul Brereton. For the rest of the video, I'm going to refer to him as the Commissioner. In July 2023, the RoboDebt Royal Commission referred six people to the NAC. Right from the beginning, the Commissioner made declarations of a conflict of interest with respect to one of those six people. The report doesn't name anyone, but is likely to be Catherine Campbell. Catherine Campbell was one of the main culprits of RoboDebt, but as it turns out, both her and the Commissioner were Major Generals in the Australian Army. In his declarations, the Commissioner said that he had a close association with one of the people who had been referred, and that the person was well known to him. As a result, he said he would not be involved in any decisions concerning that person. Instead, a Deputy Commissioner would be delegated the task of making the decision. But that's not what happened. Instead, the Commissioner attended meetings where the RoboDebt referrals were discussed. He helped draft the reasons for the decision not to investigate the referred people, and helped draft the media release. We can see minutes to the meetings where the RoboDebt referrals were being discussed, and throughout the whole meeting, the Commissioner was providing his opinions as to why there shouldn't be an investigation. So much for not being involved in the decision-making process. For comparison, there was another NAC Deputy Commissioner who declared a conflict of interest as well. Years ago, when the Commonwealth Ombudsman was investigating RoboDebt, she was the Deputy Commonwealth Ombudsman. At the time, she had been pushing back against the assertions that income averaging was legal. She ended up being mentioned in the Royal Commission's report, so she declared it as a conflict. After that, she didn't read any material prepared or attend any meetings or participate in any decision-making in relation to the referrals. That's how you deal with a conflict of interest. Ultimately, the inspector looked into all of this and found that the commissioner had engaged in officer misconduct. Now, officer misconduct is pretty broadly defined, but in this case, it was the conduct of the commissioner in managing his conflicts of interest that arose from a mistake of law. As a result, the inspector made the recommendation that the NAC reconsider his decision not to investigate the RoboDebt referrals. The NAC agreed. In a media release, 
The NAC said that they had decided to have an independent person reconsider its decision not to investigate the RoboDebt Royal Commission referrals. To be honest, the decision may not change, but at least there won't be a perception of bias involved. Speaking of media releases, another issue that the inspector raised was the initial media release from the NAC that gave their reasons for why they wouldn't conduct an investigation. The initial media release said that there wasn't value in duplicating the work that had already been done, and that the NAC could only consider whether the conduct in question amounted to corrupt conduct. But that's the whole point of the NAC, so not sure what they're trying to say here, but the media release keeps going. The NAC cannot grant a remedy or impose a sanction like the APSC can. The APSC is the Australian Public Service Commission, which can investigate breaches of the Code of Conduct and apply sanctions for public servants who are still employed. But this media release was misleading. The NAC had been told by the APSC that they were confident further information was available in respect of one of the referred persons but the APSC didn't have the powers to obtain that information. So the whole thing about there being no value in duplicating work that had already been done just wasn't true. And then the comment about the APSC being able to impose sanctions was also wrong. The NAC knew that five of the people referred were no longer public servants, which meant that the APSC could not impose any sanctions on them. This was even noted by the RoboDebt Royal Commissioner and probably factored into why she made the referral to the NAC in the first place. Then to make things worse, the last person who was referred wasn't even a public servant. They were most likely a former minister, so they weren't subject at all to the APSC investigation. So for that person, there was no basis to say that they were subject to multiple investigations or potential sanctions from the APSC. Now it's important to keep in mind that the inspector's investigation was not a merits review, meaning that it wasn't looking at the NAC's decision not to investigate RoboDebt. Instead, it was looking at the process behind that decision. It is still up to the NAC whether it decides to investigate or not. The other thing to keep in mind is that the inspector didn't find any actual bias from the commissioner, just a perception of bias. But the point here is that this is the National Anti-Corruption Commission, It's meant to be the ultimate example of integrity. And for it to be caught up in this so early in its operations is a real shame. The RoboDebt Royal Commission took the time to do its work and decided to make a referral to the NAC. The least that the NAC could do is to give that referral the attention that it deserves.